My name is Ted Bellinger, and I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon at the Texas Beck Institute. Spinal instability is a little bit of a loose concept, and I think it means different things to different people. It's sort of a vague term. Uh, I think there are circumstances where you would have agreement from surgeon to surgeon about whether or not a person's spine is quote unquote unstable. For example, an easy example would be uh, a motor vehicle accident victim with uh, an acute dislocation of their spine. 100% of us would agree that's unstable and, and that's going to be a factor in our decision making and would probably be treated surgically for you know vast majority of those circumstances. In less obvious situations, it can be a little nebulous as to what do you mean it's unstable. Uh, to, to sort of put it in layman's terms, I think we define it as uh, a spine segment is unstable if it moves in an abnormal way under normal physiologic loads. So uh, a vertebra should not sublux two inches out of place when you bend over. Uh, it should move a couple millimeters, that would be normal, uh, but at some point you cross a line and it's not a situation where we can say four millimeters is okay and five millimeters is bad. Uh, it's going to be different from person to person based on their anatomy and their age and, and the rest of the context. So somebody with an acute injury who has spinal instability can have a spectrum of symptoms. At a minimum, you'd expect them to have pain in the area of the injury. So if it's a neck injury, they should have neck pain. If it's a thoracic spine fracture, should have pain in that area. Um, and then there could be involvement uh, neurologically. If you have compression of a nerve, you could have pain and numbness and weakness in your arm or your leg. If it involves the spinal cord, you could have profound numbness, weakness, paralysis, inability to walk, uh, loss of control of bowel or bladder function, uh, urinary retention, uh, a whole spectrum of symptoms there. Well, it starts with analyzing what exactly is the pattern of the injury, and what a surgeon will do is, is really try to categorize the injury. Uh, how bad is this fracture, and, and wh what location is it, and, and there's classification systems and all sorts of things that we learn through our training. And then if you feel that the patient would benefit from it, we often are performing surgery, which is a combination of decompressive surgery and stabilization surgery. And stabilization surgery is usually a fusion procedure with some sort of instrumentation, screws and rods to stabilize the spine. And then a fusion refers to basically doing a procedure to uh, trick the body into healing separate vertebrae together as though they were one solid bone and that can afford stability on a long-term basis.